Hey there, it's so nice to see you here. In my last video, I invited you to my free watercolor starter course, all about helping you get unstuck, excited, and help you get into action. If you haven't signed up yet, you can find a link in the description box down below. And the number one reason why most of those who sign up feel stuck in the watercolor journey is that they feel frustrated with their painting abilities and because they always want to make everything look perfect. If you can relate, I really hope this video will be helpful because I wanted to share some tips on how you can overcome it so you can simply pick up your brush and start painting. First, let's talk about your frustration with your painting abilities. Most of the time when we feel frustrated with something is because we want something to be a certain way. We might think that someone is better, smarter and more successful than we are simply because we compare ourselves to others, right? We know that something could be better, so why can't we have that, right? You might look at someone's art and ask yourself, why does my painting look like crap? Why can't I be better than this? First of all, art is meant to be an extension of emotion, thought, something you do to relax, to express yourself. It's not a competition. I realize you will never be 100% happy with anything if you don't make a conscious choice. As soon as we reach something or certain level, we will always look for what's next. So what helped me was to be really aware of the fact that I will always feel like I could do something better. There will always be the thought, well, I could, I could make it better and this will probably never go away. But the art is to know, yes, it can always be better, but I'm satisfied with the results I created right now. And at the end of the day, we are all work in progress. You would never bash your friend who's trying to learn something new and get better at it. So why are you doing this to yourself? Be mindful and reframe your thinking whenever frustration creeps in. Think about what exactly didn't work and break it down to which skill you need help with. Is this color mixing, composition, proportion or something completely different? And as you might have heard, every master was once a beginner, every pro was once an amateur. No one is born with any special talents. The only thing we might be born experts in is eating, sleeping and all these things. But to become good at anything, you simply need to practice. We all were bad at walking, talking as small kids and we didn't learn all of this in like 15 minutes. You simply had to do it over and over to be good at it. And we keep forgetting that. We forgot that things take time and that's okay. The problem is that nowadays most of us are impatient. We want everything fast and easy. If something doesn't work out immediately, we give up. We immediately think we have failed. But as you might have heard, failure is a matter of perspective. You can either go the route of thinking that you're simply not talented enough because you failed at something. Or you can use this as an opportunity to see what's not working, to bring out your curiosity to learn, readjust and get better at something. Because failure is another stepping stone to greatness. The second problem you might be facing is your perfectionism. But your goal isn't to be perfect. What is perfection anyway, right? At the core, perfectionism is a desperate attempt to live up to impossible standards. When I was writing my watercolor book, I was reading the book called Finish, Give Yourself the Gift of Done by John Acuff. And he made me realize that developing tolerance for imperfection is the key factor in turning chronic starters into consistent finishers. He said that the problem with perfectionism is that it magnifies your mistakes and minimizes your progress. As John Acuff says, progress is quiet and it whispers. Perfectionism screams failures and hides progress. When one thing doesn't go perfectly, everything falls apart. At least what we tend to think, right? The smallest misstep means the entire thing is ruined. Your perfectionism also makes you aim too high right from the beginning. The problem is not that we want to become better at something. The problem is that our better turns into best and we want massive overnight success. Again, because we are impatient. Who wants to spend time practicing color mixing if you could paint the Mona Lisa? You might be imagining a great idea for a painting, you will get all excited, then you want your idea to turn out to be perfect and then all of a sudden you feel like you're not good enough to accomplish that, so you quit. And most of the time before you have even started. 
And this is one of the first lies that perfectionism will tell you. Quit if it isn't perfect. So we subconsciously hide by doing something else or create novel obstacles that excuse our actions. John Acuff put this perfectly into words. He said, a hiding place is the safe place you go to hide from your fear of messing up. It's a task that lets you get your perfectionism fixed by making you feel successful even as you avoid your goal. If you're watching Netflix, every time it's time for you to do X, that's a hiding place. You're afraid to face the fear of imperfection that comes along with every endure. So you're hiding from it by doing something that requires no skill. You might write a bad sentence on your blog, but no one's going to critique the way you watch TV. A noble obstacle is what perfectionism throws at you next if you deal with the hiding places. It's a very good reason you cannot pursue your goal. Perfectionism will tell you, if you're going to do it, you might as well do it right. And when we leave the idea of right undefined, it tends to get complicated, usually in one of two ways. In the first kind of noble obstacle, perfectionism sneakily tells you that you cannot move towards your goal until you do something else. I can't do X until Y. In the second kind, perfectionism tells you that reaching your goal could actually produce bad results or make you a bad person. So basically, we keep telling ourselves how things should be, plus we're afraid what others might say about us or what it will say about ourselves if something doesn't turn out the way we hoped. So we keep avoiding things. As with anything, it's not about the destination, but enjoying every step of the journey with all the ups and downs. So enjoy the creative process. That's what it's all about, not the result. You're creating art because you want it to make you feel good, to relax, to express yourself. Your ability isn't what's important, your enjoyment is. It's like thinking, I can only be happy when I have X, Y, Z. Until I can enjoy painting, I need to be perfect at my skills. As John said in his book, until it's just perfectionism wearing a Halloween costume. And there's nothing wrong with being a beginner, spending time to practice and having art pieces you don't like. Not one single artist is happy with every piece they've created. I see so many people saying whenever they share their art, I'm just a beginner as if they have to excuse themselves or as if they have to be ashamed of what they share. We all started somewhere as a beginner and you don't do art for other people and their approval either, right? See everything you're working on as something you just practice, something you do to relax and just to have fun. You probably have noticed that the less you stress about something that you create, the better it turns out. It's like when you would write or paint with your non-dominant hand. You don't expect it to look neat and polished. And in the end, you might be even surprised by what you can do with your other hand, right? And the more you paint, the more experience and the more confidence you get. As I always say, just keep playing and experimenting. Don't take yourself so seriously. So what if something didn't turn out the way you wanted? Your goal right now is to learn and to enjoy painting. Keep telling yourself that. And as I said in my previous video, practice makes progress, not perfection. No art is perfect. You can even make an appointment with yourself and meet up to paint regularly. Turn your interest into something to help you become the person you want to be. That shows up for herself, is willing to grow by facing obstacles and who doesn't procrastinate on things she wants to do in her life anymore. That's what we ultimately all want, right? Don't forget to sign up for my free watercolor starter series. It starts next week. I really hope this video was helpful. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day and I will see you in my next video. Bye!